What's going on guys, Big and in the background today, we have Division 1 gameplay, this is just your everyday game, just logged on, playing Division 1, went into my online season, and away we go, we're playing the game, throw that across Bacon, yep, got him, right off the bat, first minute in, shouldn't he quit, just quit man, anyways he sticks around, he doesn't quit, I score a lot of goals in this game, but the point of this one is, I just want you to notice, because every now and again I get people say, oh he does cross crease, oh he does one timer, that's what they say, but I want you to take a notice at all the shots I take. Look, there's a short side, gets robbed. I want you to notice the percentage the one-timer cross crease goes in compared to any other shot, whether it's short side, whether it's me trying to make a deke, whether it's me doing anything else. I want you to just notice the percentage and all the different shots I take. I show most of my shots this game, and I'm going to try to, and I just want you to notice the difference. But anyways, let's get to the real point of the video. <laughs> the Detroit Red Wings clinch, baby. Woo! Here we go, Division 1, lighting it up. Speaking of that, like, okay, the Red Wings, I thought they would have came out flying, and they go out, and they get that goal, and the coach's shot. We don't have time to talk about the coach's shot. Yeah, we do, but we're going to talk about it soon. The coach's challenge. Oh, my gosh. But anyways, long story short, the Red Wings lose, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, but you guys are tweeting me. You guys are like, yo, Bacon, it don't matter. The Senators got it. They got your back, baby. They got it. Anyway, the Bruins got I was surprised that the Bruins didn't just clean house against the Senators, but that makes Ottawa my second favorite team right now. They have to be. They, have to, they put my Red Wings into the playoffs. They absolutely have to be. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that game turned out that way. Long story short, Red Wings are in, Flyers are in, Boston's out. I mean, Flyers were in a pretty good spot. They had two games, but they played unreal. Apparently, everybody's talking about that game, that the Flyers really look like they want to win against Pittsburgh. Imagine that series. If they could match up in playoffs again, <laughs> everybody, I don't care if you're a fan of either team or you hate both teams, that series was fun to watch. When they get to, when those two teams go against each other, so fun to watch. Tons of goals. It's rough. It's good. It's great. Anyways. The Detroit Red Wings are in, and we're getting paired up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We are back, baby! Woo! <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Look, look, okay, before, I don't I don't even want to hear your excuses, right? I took a lot of flag last year in Game 7. Oh, it wouldn't have mattered just because you go down, it's part of it. Uh, Cronwall was out for Game 7. If you missed it, how could you be here and not know that? Anyways, Cronwall gets kicked out for Game 7. And the Red Wings lose. Actually, our defense didn't play that bad. But look, our best defenseman was out. Our best defenseman was out. Now we're going up against Tampa, and Stamkos is out. And maybe Johnson. I haven't heard an update on Johnson. Those are two huge losses. But you Tampa fans, you guys are kind of giving it to me last year. I don't know. Anyways, I'm pumped. I am pumped. Anything can happen in playoffs. I'm not taking it lightly. Hopefully the boys aren't taking it lightly. No stamp goes. I don't care. We got to go. We got to go. We got a good match. I like the matchup. I actually like the matchup. So I'm pumped. We need good goaltending. Jimmy, you got to stand in there, bud. Who do you think they're going to go with? I think they got to roll Jimmy. I think that I would think they got to roll with Jimmy right now. I don't know. Mrazek hasn't been hot, although at the start of the season. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I think they'll start Jimmy and see what happens with him, but... Anyways, we clinch playoffs. That's the biggest thing. Let's talk about that coach challenge, though. Like, I was hating it, right? The Red Wings, they score a goal, and I'm like, yep, here we go, one nothing. It was early on. I'm like, you know, if it comes down to can you imagine if that coach's challenge would have kept Detroit out of the playoffs? Oh, my God, I would have never dropped it. I never would have dropped it, ever. Cromwell getting kicked out of Game 7. People are already naming my hut team for next year. They're like... Uh, what do they call it? Coaches Challenge 82? That's <laughs> like Game 82? Anyways, that's what people wanted me to call my hut team next year. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. You guys are funny though. Look at that. Snipes at top. Jeez, there's that clapper. I've got a few one-timer goals. You guys noticing? You guys noticing these goals as I jibber jabber on? Anyways, this Coaches Challenge. I want to tell you what I hate. I don't like about it. I just don't like part of that rule. I don't care and don't confuse it. Don't confuse it. People say it was offside. It was this. It was. That's okay. And you know what? I'm, I'm actually good with the coach's challenge in certain scenarios. I like it. If somebody hits the goalie, then you can go back and be like, yeah, you know what? The goalie actually didn't have a chance to stop that. Like, like my goalie didn't have a chance to stop that either. He almost did the way too low. Deked a little bit. Anyways, 
if you go back and the goalie, he gets taken out of the play, that's fine. Call the goal back. That's okay. That's okay. Ref missed it on the ice. I would prefer it gets called out there, and that's okay. And, but that's fine. Even offsides, I'm okay with that. You're going to say, all right, Bacon, what the hell are you talking about? I'm actually okay with it. If a guy's like clearly offside, both feet are in, and he's gone, he's just offside, they missed it, it's human error, right? You're on the ball as a coach, and don't get, hey, that was a great call. That was, that was an amazing call to call that offside by the Rangers coach. A good eye. Good, I actually thought, whoa, that was close off the bat anyways. So that was a great call by him. But if the guy's clearly offside, the coach sees it. He throws that red flag, right? If he sees it and throws the red flag and they decide, yep, it was offside, no goal, right? I actually like that. What I don't like about it is I think it should be more like football. I hate this. Oh, my God. One foot's in and then one his toe is like an inch or like a quarter of an inch off the ice. So all of a sudden that's offside. I hate that. I hate, if it breaks the plane, if his foot's over the blue line, he should still be onside. If he would, like if his skate is a quarter of an inch lower and it's touching the ice and he's onside, he should be onside. In my opinion, that's the part of the rule I hate. I don't like that. I hate how they get the microscope out and they're just trying. Like, I don't understand. I, I'm surprised they even put it in, to be honest, because they want more goals in this league. They keep talking about that. Shrink the goalie's equipment. Shrink this, shrink that. Anyways, make the nets bigger. They're always talking about that. And then they do this, and you can rewind. How, how far can you go back to the next whistle? Can you go all the What if it's five minutes? What if it's five minutes? Anyway, I don't know. I don't know how far you can go back. Maybe they have a limit. I have no idea. I just don't like that. I feel like... It shouldn't matter if your skate's off the ice or on, guys drag their foot, whatever it is. If it's over the blue line, it should be onside. And then you're going to get into a really gray area. But if you get the, if you have to get the microscope out, fucking <laughs> tie goes to the runner. He's onside. That's what I say. That's what, Anyway, that's my opinion. That's what I don't like about it. If you're clearly offside, you're offside. Throw the red flag. That's good. If you hit the goalie, throw the red flag. That's good. But I, don't, I just don't like that. I don't like that a little bit. I remember when Cromwell got kicked out. Yeah, game seven, right? Got, gets kicked out for game seven. And people are like freeze-framing like milliseconds. Be like, see, his skate's off the ice. And you can't even, you, you actually can't even tell if it's actually off the ice or not. Like the back skate, yeah, the front one definitely was, but the back skate, they're like, look, it's off right there. And I'm like, I don't even know if it is. I still don't know if it is. Anyways, I just don't like the microscope. I just don't like that little bit. Look at this. I couldn't get the puck off him. Anyway, dipsy dangles and snipe. Anyways, so let's get to it. We got to talk about it. Pavel Datsuk announcing. Right before playoffs, by the way. I don't, I, don't, I mean, I guess. When you're Pavel Datsuk, you can kind of do whatever you want. And that's what I like. You can tell how respected the guy is. And if you didn't hear, I don't know where you've been, but if you didn't hear, he announced, apparently he told the media, out, or I don't know, a newspaper, uh, I don't know who he told. Anyways, it got out that he has decided he's going to go back to Russia next year, and he's leaving the NHL anyways. Long story short, he still has one, con or one year on his contract in Detroit. If it isn't bad enough that you're losing your most talented player in Pavel Datsyuk, he has the most points per game this year. He missed a few games for the Red Wings. He has the most points per game on the team. If it isn't bad enough, you're losing that guy. Your number one guy. Look at that. Way too low. Snipe it. Nah, you see the speed on. Anyways, if it isn't bad enough, you're losing your number one guy. My favorite player, by the way, too. So if that isn't bad enough, you got your most talented player. It's going to be tough to replace him no matter what. Your biggest points per game guy right now, two 97-point seasons out of this guy. He's been a Red Wing forever. He's been amazing for the organization. How are you going to replace that? Not only that, though, he's got one year left on that contract, and it's dead cap space. I think it's $7.5 million, and we have to take that hit. You have to take the hit. The only way around it is you've got to trade the contract. It still goes against the cap. So you're already down. Your Whatever the cap is, minus 7.5 mil for the Detroit Red Wings right now. That hurts. And you know how respected Datsuk is? Nobody even mentions that. Nobody says anything. Like if it was another player, can you imagine if it was Quincy or another player? They'd be like, wow, that's a dirty move. But everyone's like, you know what? Datsuk wants to be with his family. And that's great. And I actually agree with that. I actually got, I love him so much. It's going to hurt the organization, hurt my team so much. 
And I'm still like, you know what? He's great though. He's been great forever. I love him. He's great. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that too, man. That hurts, but you know what? Then I got thinking, look, if we could trade that contract away, are we all of a sudden in the race for Stamkos again? Can you imagine? Steven Stamkos in red and white? Come on, baby. Think about it. Think about it. Hopefully you guys like this video. Let's go Wings! See you guys soon.